friends of mine that I invited, and uh, grateful to see everyone. And uh, I've been preaching a series at my church lately. Well, let's start with prayer, can we? Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we praise you today. Thank you for another awesome day. Lord, we thank you for the favor that you've showed us through the owners of Sonny's here. We ask for your blessings on them over and over again. Return back to them their kindness towards allowing your men to meet here, Lord. We ask for your blessings on them. We ask for your blessings on our meeting and on these men today. Lead us and guide us. Speak to us all now, Lord, through your word here today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I've been at a series lately of, at my church on Matthew chapter 24, and the question... What will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? And this subject here today I want to talk about fits right in line. And that is climate change. You see, just the buzz in the air over that word. Everyone's buzzing about it. I preached it at my church a while ago. The Lord's had me change that a little bit. I'm going to preach it again here coming up somewhere else. Everyone's talking about it. Now, just on the news yesterday. I heard them say that uh, they were suggesting that gay turtles were coming next year due to, well, you guess it. Of course, due to climate change. See, climate change has caused sexual confusion in Brevard County turtles. So be on the lookout for gay turtles next year. But that's nothing new for them. I mean, there's liberals chasing penguins around for years looking for gay penguins. And they still haven't found any. But anyway, that's a sermon for you. can strike that from the video if you want to. But climate change. I don't know about you, but I've had it up to the fans. With climate change and everyone's ignorant talk about it. Robert Kennedy, the son of Robert Kennedy, the politician, said if he has his way, denying climate change will bring a mandatory jail sentence. You deny it, you're going to prison. These people have lost their mind. This is what I want to talk to you about today. And I hear so much anger and dispute over it, I feel the time is perfect to share with you guys What's God's opinion? Imagine that, huh? What's God's opinion on climate change? No one wants to talk about God's opinion. You hear everyone's opinion, every politician's opinion. What does God have to say about it? That's what we're going to look at here. For those over 40, it's easy to be skeptical. In his 1992 book, Earth in the Balance, Albert Gore predicted the end of the combustion engine by 2017. Laugh, it's hysterical. It, it's ignorance. The end of the combustion engine by 2017 and said it was an outdated technology that's one of the main sources of carbon dioxide production that poses a mortal threat to society. Al Gore and other environmentalists argue the release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere has created a, the catch this buzz phrase, a hole in the ozone layer. Who can remember that? Anyone over 50 years old? Remember when all the bullies were chasing everyone around and demanding that you ban right guard? You don't find it in a spray anymore. Why? Because back in 1985, the end of the world was coming because of right guard in aerosol, aerosol spray cans. Because that was the buzzword then, and everyone believed it. Mass hysteria. So what does the Bible say about all this? Is climate change real? What's the future look like? Everyone wants to talk about it, like I said, but no one wants to mention God. And that's what I want to do. I want to mention God here to you men. I want you to hear what God's got to say about it. The sustainer of all is not Mother Nature. 
It's Father God. He is the sustainer of everything. God is the one who maintains the world and the galaxy. Listen to this verse. Uh, this is something that God said to Noah. He said, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. There's no reason to stop believing that promise yet. Almighty God is the sustainer of everything. All you have to do is trust God. He's got a plan. He is sovereign. He's still in control. He's never stopped being sovereign. God made it all. Psalm 19, 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Now that's not an excuse for us to trash the planet. You and I are to do our very best at keeping this planet beautiful, right? But now I haven't answered the question. Is climate change real or not? This I will tell you according to the word of God. It will be real. <laughs> In the near future. Let me read from the book of Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11 verse 3. It says, I will give power to my two witnesses. And they will prophesy... 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. Now, on a Hebrew calendar of 360 days, 1,260 days is three and a half years. If anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. If anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. Sounds like spot on the monsters. Anyone remember that? You know, the, the dragon that lived underneath the stairs when they opened up the fire come out of his mouth? These, hear this, these have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls during the days of their prophecy. Now, yikes, here comes some serious climate change. <laughs> How long is the days of their prophecy? Three and a half years. Think about it. When the two witnesses arrive here, they have power and will use the power, I'm sure, to see to it that it doesn't rain on this earth for three and a half years. And we've arrived at the time when no one gives glory to God when this happens. As it is right now. Who do they blame right now for the fires in California? I'll give you a hint. He's got orange hair, and he's a man in power. Donald Trump! He's blamed for the fires in California. Prior to him, who was it? It was George Bush was blamed for all of climate change. You see, we are at the time now when God is shaking. He says, yet once more, I'll shake not only heaven but earth. And now when God is trying to wake people up, people are blaming Donald Trump for it. And he's saying, wake up, people. My return is near. And people are blaming men for this. Blaming their own person. I can think back at the last hurricane. Matter of fact, that was one of the last times I was here preaching about no water. Think about, I... I pity the fool who's going to walk into Walmart a day before a hurricane. you got to wear a helmet on your head to go in there. They'll chase you around with a hatchet. Fighting over what? Water on the shelf. Am I right? Isn't it absolute pandemonium in Brevard County? Not only we've got water, just that the threat of the possibility that there might not be water. It's like Walmart on Black Friday. When they open up the doors and then you start getting trampled on. That is just the threat of no water right now. Look at what happened before. Let me read it to you. When there was no rain. This comes out of 2 uh, Kings chapter 6. It says, there was a great famine in Samaria 
And indeed, they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and a fourth, one fourth of a cab of dove droppings for five shekels of silver. Now, what's a shekel of silver? It's worth about two bucks today. So $160, $160 for a head and $10 for some bird poop. And I thought broccoli was bad. Half my church family will tell you, I hate broccoli. $10 for bird poop? This is what they did the last time there was a drought here. You see, in desperate times, People will do desperate things. Satan's got everyone figured out. He says, skin for skin, all that a man has, he will give for his life. There's nothing most people won't do to save their own hide. Now imagine three and a half years with no water. So he goes on here in Second Kings. He says, then as the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried out to him, saying, help my lord, O king. And he said, if the Lord doesn't help you, how can I help you? From the threshing floor or from the wine press? Then the king said to her, what is troubling you? And she answered, this woman said to me, give your son so that we can eat him today, and we'll eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him. And I said to her the next day, give your son so that we can eat him. But she is hitting her son. Now remember, in desperate times, people will do desperate things. At the end of the age, people will take the mark of the beast. Why? Because there's no water on the earth for three and a half years. Now back to these two witnesses. They've got power to shut heaven so that no rain falls during the days of their prophecy. Now the verse continues. And to have power over the waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth, not just Jerusalem, <clears throat> everywhere, to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. So is climate change real? Let me say not only is climate change real, but this climate change is going to be the catalyst for the end of the world as we know it. It's all going to revolve around climate change. It's just don't blame Donald Trump for it. But look up when it happens and give glory to God. Don't blame a man for it. Look up and repent of sins you've committed and turn to God because he's trying to shake people up out of this lethargy that they're in. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it'll be when I return. Marrying, getting in marriage, eating, drinking. <clears throat> this is what Jesus said. He said, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And on earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Sounds like the Weather Channel. Ever watch the Weather Channel on a hurricane? <laughs> Golly, if I hear climate change one more time, my TV's going to go out the front window. Give credit to God. You see, again, men will blame George Bush or Donald Trump, and they'll be too ignorant or too filled with rage to see and understand that climate change has come from Almighty God. That's where it's come from. That's where it's going to come from. This is a wake-up call that Jesus is coming back soon. Are you ready for his return? Are you ready for his return? When you see all these signs, he says, look up, because your redemption draws near. And these are all the signs that you'll know he's coming back soon, right? Famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places, the love of men <coughs> growing cold because of all the lawlessness in the world. People are going to hate their neighbor. We live in a closed garage door society here today. No one knows their neighbor anymore. Because Jesus said that's one of the signs. 
that his return is near. And all of this, oh, men's hearts fell in them from fear and expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. All of this perhaps in your lifetime. I believe it. As a Bible expositor, as one that spent his life studying this book, I believe he's coming back. As a preacher, I believe he's coming back on my shift. Mike. And I preach with that in mind. And if I'm wrong, I can handle that. I'll be charged. Esposito, you are charged with preparing people for my return. How do you plead? <laughs> Guilty. I'm guilty of that. I believe he's coming back on my watch. The question is, are you ready for his return? Hebrews 9.28 said he's coming again a second time to all those who look for him. He will appear to those that are looking for him. Heaven forbid he meant what he said. What happens if you're not looking for him? You'll miss something. And the door is shut. No, that's not in the Bible, is it? You bet it is. Strive to enter into the narrow gate, because many will try to get in and will not be able once the master of the house is risen up and shuts the door. And you begin to, I better knock. <laughs> knock at that door and say, Lord, we're ready now. Oh, no, I confuse that with something else in the Bible, the ten versions. Five were ready, five weren't. Those that were ready went into the feast. Those that weren't, the door was shut on their toes. The question is, are you ready for Jesus' return? And don't be confused when you see climate change and hear about it and people trying to get you into hysteria. Because you know where it's, you've got, I like to call this book, this is tomorrow's newspaper delivered today. It's like going to Hialeah with wind, place, and show of every race that's going to be won. Race. You've got the winners. You've got tomorrow's newspaper. So when people are panicking, when people are boiling their children, you've got this covered. Because your trust is in Almighty God. And he's got it. But it's all part of his plan. Isn't that right, Steve? This is all part of God's plan. Now, the great meteorologist, the best meteorologist I've ever heard, his name is St. Peter. This is what he says. Knowing this, that scoffers are going to come in the last days saying, where is the promise of his coming? Where is he? All you religious fanatics, you've been saying this for you. This is how you'll know his return is near. When scoffers are going around here saying, nah, I don't believe that. Don't believe this climate change stuff. That's God. Who's God? When people start talking like that, this is one of the signs that you'll know that his return is near. Scoffers will come in the last day, walking according to their own lusts, saying... Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. But this they willfully forget, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then was perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by that same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. Now that's the future for planet Earth. Now Peter continues. He says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, both the earth, earth and the 
works that are in it will be burned up. So for all the Democrat alarmists out here, whom the Republicans all mock, who claim there's only 12 years left until climate change destroys the world, and everyone laughs at them, guess what, friend? Might be shorter than that. Everyone laughs at them. Oh, that's not gonna, might be shorter than that. You don't know. No one knows. At an hour you think not. This, I guarantee you, is coming at a time when you don't expect. And prior to his coming, we're gonna see this kind of incredible climate change here on Earth. 12 years, everyone laughed at the woman there, and she's crazy in her own right, who says there's 12 years left. But Shields is going to blame Donald Trump for 12 years left, and I'm going to give the glory to God for under 12 years left. Because at an hour, you think, nah, he's coming back. And these are the signs that are going to precede his coming back. Climate change. Three and a half years with no water. Imagine that. Let me go on. The Apostle Paul wrote, Jesus is coming back in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on all those that don't know God. How many people do you know that don't know God? Or even worse than this, inflicting vengeance on those that don't know God and on those that don't obey the gospel. Is there anyone in this room today that didn't obey the gospel? There's one honest man. Reminds me of my sermon this last week when Peter says, One of you is going to deny me. And then the, they all go, Is it I? Is it I? Judas says, Is it I? Is it I? And Peter's the only one that says, I don't care, everyone. I don't care if everyone does this. I will, ne I will never turn my back on you. And the one guy who was thinking for all of us, who says it could never happen, is the one guy that fell and did it. <laughs> we all have gone through a stage where we haven't obeyed the gospel. Must I make a list? Want me to come back next week, Bill? With a list of the things in the gospel? Must we? Husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church. How are we doing on that one? <laughs> <laughs> try, right? <laughs> we try. <laughs> That's not saying he expects you to be perfect. Oh, wait, he does say, be therefore perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. <laughs> Who's able to stand? You see, thank God, just... We praise Jesus Christ who took our penalty. We can't keep these rules. But thank God Jesus died in our place. And he was able to keep the rules. Amen. And he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him would not perish. We can't keep all these rules. God's never... All we can do is receive him and what he's done in our place. So... Okay, let me finish this text here. Let me finish. What's a Christian to do? I say climate change is real. What are we going to do about it? Let's put something on, some meat on this. What am I supposed to do if what you say, preacher, is right? Let me finish Peter's text. He'll show us the answer to that. Verse 11 here, 2 Peter 3, 11. Therefore... <coughs> Since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? All right. Since all these things are going to happen because God says it's going to happen, he gives three things. How should we behave? What should we do until he comes back or we die and leave this world? What should we do? Three things. Number one is conduct yourself in holiness. That is, once again, don't be like the world. <clears throat> don't boil your son, unless it be flunked out of science. 
Don't spend $10 on a jar of bird poop. Try trusting in God instead. Don't be like the world. You see, the world's looking at you to see if you're any different than all these other people out here. Same as the Apostle Paul in jail. When he was in jail, it says all the prisoners were watching them. And what did they do after they were beaten up? What did they do, Mike? They sang hymns and gave glory to God. When trouble is on the world, the unbelievers look to you to see what you're going to do, to see if you're all caught, or if you're going to act any different than everyone else that's out here in a frenzy. So that's number one. That's conduct yourself in holiness. Number two, remain godly. Remain godly. To be godly is to have godly attributes like love, mercy. You know, I've been thinking about that idiot that's on the TV that did the. Which idiot? There's a lot of them. Bill Nye, the science guy, who did the debate with Ken Ham on the. And it was like four or six hours long. I challenge you, you tell me, friends. Where the character trait of mercy comes from. You show me what monkey you inherited mercy from. Show me what ape originated love, agape love, that would send his son to die on the cross. God demonstrates his own love towards us and that while we're still sinners, Jesus died for you on your worst day. Show me what monkey you got that from. You see, the class, that, that's a 30-second debate. You did not inherit mercy. Mercy is a character trait of Almighty God, and he's given it to you. Love is a character trait of God. Of course, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That might count a little bit, don't you think? Yep. <laughs> Believe God and his word. And that's the end of that. Last thing, <laughs> looking for his return. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him, New King James says, under to those that eagerly await him, he will appear a second time. Anyone here have any children? My family growing up, we used to open our Christmas presents on Christmas Eve. And my mother and father sent us all upstairs. Think of the anticipation of a child on Christmas Eve. That's what he's looking for in you and me when he comes back. He's coming back a second time to all those that eagerly await his return. This is how you and I need to live here in this world while we're waiting for him to come back. Amen? Amen? Those three things. That's conduct yourself in godliness. Remain godly with godly attributes. Don't be like the world. And number three, look for his return. That's what we need to be doing. Are you looking for his return? These are the ones he's coming back for. These are the ones he says he will appear to. So there you have it. Is climate change real? Answer, it will be. The question is, are you ready? And will you give the credit for it to where credit is due? And one other thing. No force in the universe can stop it or slow it down or change it. You can outlaw all the combustion engines in the galaxy. You're not going to stop the locomotive named Jehovah from coming back. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. That was good. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, we have a large group here today. So please be kind to Sundays. We have a pickle jar up here for you new guys. To sit right up here. Suggested donation is around 10 bucks a person. Not all of you guys can do that. Some of you guys can do more. We can really bless Sunny's greatly today if we all did a little bit more. So
think about that, pray about that. Next week, our speaker is going to be uh, Pastor Mark Ragsdale from Church at Vieira. I'm excited. I'm always excited to see him. I see him every week. He's my pastor. So uh, I'm always excited. He always challenges. I don't know what he's bringing, but I know it's going to be good. So uh, be kind of sunny, so you guys have a great week.